Hi, this is Gary Kelly with Castaneda Realty Group, and I am joined by Siobhan Weber, who is one of the gods of Castaneda. I, I like to say I'm a lowly agent, and she's one of the gods. Um, mm. And what she would probably say is we're all gods there, and we all are equal and all that, which is good. Um, I did want to talk to you about when you are listing a house and the seller has a dog, what do you tell the listing agent? What do you tell the seller? How do you deal with that? Well, very topical, um, especially during the holidays, Gary, when UPS and the dreaded FedEx are opening your door. Uh, the dog doesn't know their name anymore and won't, won't respond to any calls. So what I normally will tell them, especially for showings. Right, is, for everyone watching this video, Siobhan is dying right now. So just <laughs> enjoy. Siobhan sitting there saying, oh my God, and it's, and it's fine. That's why I asked about the dog. Um, yeah, it's a situation I can't control. So it's stressing me out a little bit. And now he's here hitting me with his tail. Um, so in case you think these are scripted, you guys, not scripted. Um, hush, hush, hush. So it's hard, right? To do showings with animals and kids and all that stuff. You know, you're trying to keep your house clean and then you want it to be a, you know, a nice, enjoyable showing experience without this kind of noise around. So at the end of the day, I've had people who, who can't find care for their dogs during showings and they'll be in the backyard or they'll um, put them in their crates and, you know, we do the best we can and, and work around it. But ideally it's more comfortable for your pet, quite frankly, um, as well as for everybody else, if they can be out of the house during showings. Uh, it's amazing what our furry friends pick up and when strangers are in and out of the house with different smells and sounds and all that stuff, um, you know, you can kind of visibly see them get stressed out. So uh, it's nice if, you know, it is an option, but we understand sometimes it's not. And we're very, very adept at making the best of less than ideal situations. So what I would say, I, I agree with everything you said. And, you know, when people say to me, you know, you can't let the cat out of the house. Well, how do I know? I, I don't particularly like cats. Just going to say it out loud. And, well, I'm not going to leave the door open so that the cat can get away. But I'm also someone that doesn't want to get scratched and all that stuff. Cause I find, you know, cat scratch fever is a real thing. So <laughs> I, I, really encourage people to somehow corral, I'm going to say restrain, you know, restrict the animal in some meaningful way. But if I went into a house and there was a dog there that sounded like the size of what I'm projecting your dog is being, I would, I would really be concerned about, is the dog going to come running out and jump on me? Yeah. And you know, do I care if a dog jumps on me? No, I am a dog person. I like dogs. But I don't want to get. I don't want to have the dog biting at me. My colleague Sue, who's a friend of all dogs, last year there were three times where she got nibbled, and it's like Sue. Not all dogs are friendly. Not all dogs like it when you jump down and put your face in their face and all that stuff. And you know, Sue will never change because that's her her affinity with dogs. But it's like. I believe you got to give a little space there before you just kind of go in. And it's hard when you're doing a showing and the dog's barking in the background or the dog, uh, you know, the, you don't let the cat out. Well, again, not letting the cat out. Typically, my experience, cats hide. So it's not a big deal. But I, I don't like the responsibility of doing an open house with a cat in it that you can't let out. You know, the, the, in my experience, the door has to be closed at that point and it gets open when someone comes through. Right. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows their pet the best and so has to really use their discretion. I I have been fortunate enough to never seen a dog be loose. The the worst or, you know, most egregious I've seen is they've been in a crate maybe or or something like that. Um, but it can be stressful and you don't know if they're friendly or um, even if they're normally friendly, you're in their space and, you know, who knows what what could happen there. Um, I did have someone to your point about cats hiding. I was in a showing and I was with um, one half of the couple in the kitchen and I heard this scream from the bedroom. So of course I go running. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I go running toward the problem. <laughs> um, and lo and behold, the problem was the other half of the couple had opened the closet door and there was a cat sleeping on one of the shelves and they terrified each other equally. Um, like you, not a cat person. And so, yeah. um, 
that was an interesting little little scenario. So um, ended up not being the house for them. <laughs> well, you know, and that's whether it would have been the house or not, and whether that interaction led to it not being the house. I think people need to understand not everyone is a pet, pet lover and and respect that as much as possible. I get that if you're at work um, and people do sometimes go to work these days uh, mm-hmm. outside of the house. No, I, it's true. So many people work from home now that, you know, people will say to me, where are we going to go? Well, you can go to Starbucks, you can go to Dunkin', you can go get a, you know, lunch, whatever. You, you can still get out of the house. It's tough when you have a, an animal, and especially if it's a large animal, where do you go with it? I'm not kidding when I say that, you know, our house, I mean, our house, Freudian slip right there, our office <laughs> um, is not only charity central, it's also pet central. So we have had people on more than one occasion come into the office with their pets. They have a cup, assuming they're close enough to do so, of course, and that it makes sense, get a cup of coffee, you know, kind of hang out in, in our space for a little while. So we try to alleviate that concern if at all possible. Um, you know, they don't like pets at the library, but if you don't have pets, you need a free place to go. That's a good option, but it's tricky. You know, it's the world is changing and we're trying to change with it as fast as possible. Well, you know, I, I, I remember, and this goes back close to a thousand years. When I was in college, the fraternity I was in got approval to have a dog. Now the approval did not come easily. Okay. It it had to go through multiple layers of the university and the the veterinarian had to make a, a signed statement and the director of housing had to make a signed statement as well. We got approval and it's like, is still people were concerned about, you know, what if the mailman comes in? What if the dog, you know, didn't like the mailman and who it gets, you know, someone gets bitten. It's, it's, it can be a problem. Of course, Motley, the dog never bit anyone. It was perfect dog, of course, of but course. Uh, it, 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 it's hard. It just is hard. You know, the biggest impact speaking of pets that I've found is the one you can't control. So it's the dog next door the drug across the street, right? Who won't stop barking during your showing because I think the clear sort of logical extrapolation from that is, oh, do I need to live next door to that now, right? Is that something that I'm going to hear all the time? Because you have no idea if that behavior is atypical or not. All you can assume is that that's going to be your experience. So, um, you know, you can definitely control whether your pets are in and around the the, uh, vicinity, but if you're good friends with your neighbors and they have a barky dog, you may want to, bring them a gift basket <laughs> and right. uh, work, work out a schedule there for the animal to be inside. Maybe. You mean milk bones? <laughs> yeah. Here, here's the milk bone. Right. All right, Sean. Well, I appreciate you carrying those with me. Andrea keeps them in her car. So actually I should get one of those fanny packs and just keep treats at all times. I do not keep treats in my car. It's just one of those things. Anyway, thank you. I appreciate your time and uh, to be continued. All right. Thank you. Yep. For what?